summation of i is equal to the lower limit and then to the upper limit. Then you have a constant value and then you got a i value. How you can write that? You can easily write that with a value like this c taken out. Then the value to be calculated. Okay, upper bound, uh, lower bound, upper bound, and then find out the values with regard to a. That you can be done. Okay, that is one way of doing it. That's one of the formulas of to be done. Okay. Then there was other formula I told you. What is other formula? Other formula was with regard to whenever you have a value like this. I value is basically going from either from zero and whatever the upper bound. Okay, upper bound may be n, or that will be very much equal to I value being equal to one and up to n. And how do you got? What is the value you can write? The value can be written very clearly like this. Okay, what is the value? Of course, this being you know. <coughs> Okay, this being your i. So, what is the value that you can easily write? You can easily write one plus two plus three, right? Up to where? Up to your n. And what is the other way of writing it? You know, sum of n numbers, right? Sum of n numbers means n into n plus one divided by two. Okay, using these two things, using these two formulas to be kept in mind, we are going to sort of simplify this. The simplification of this. Will be sort of done here, okay? So that's what we are sort of looking into it, okay? What is the thing to be done here? Okay, so I'm going to simplify these steps. Just look into this because we are supposed to get the final values of, okay? Final values of what is the you know value? You see, it will be coming up to uh, you know one by once again. I'll just move the screen. Yeah, now it will be coming up to the value of what? <clears throat> one by Sorry, n into n minus one divided by two only. It will be coming through. So how it is coming through? That is, we are going to look for here. Okay. So let's start with this. Okay, a simplification part of this. So you can see very clearly there are, you know, you have something called as n minus one here. Now the value of n minus one will not be depending on these two things because the i value starting from zero and it is going up to n minus one. You could always take this out. Okay. You can take this out and you can sort of do that. Okay. So if I do that, what is going to happen? It's not going to change much. N minus two, I'll take it out. Then I value will be equal to zero. This will be again n minus two. And here, what will be having? You will be having one. Okay. Then minus. See this entire thing. You just look into this. This entire thing using this formula, I can directly write way of things. You can see this one, and you can see this one. Okay. I can write the same thing. It looks like the same thing, but of course the value of this needs to be changed. Here you can see the upper limit is nothing but n. Here the upper limit is nothing but n minus two. So based on that, I can write a formula similar to this. So if it is n value, what is the value I write? N into n plus one divided by two. Now because I have n minus two here, right? I have n minus two here. So instead of n, I am going to write that n minus two. So you can see this n. Minus two in a place where you have n, okay, not doing anything, just simplifying based on the formula we have. Okay, then again you have n minus two. What is this n minus two? This is the n plus one. I'm writing the same thing divided by two. I'm not doing anything. I'm just based on this formula. I'm writing it same. Okay. Based on this, I'm just writing it again here. Okay. So what is the other way of writing this? This other way of writing is is Now you got your n minus one outside. Now what is the way of doing this? You know very clearly. Okay, you have something called upper bound minus lower bound plus one. That is the way you need to find out this value. So what is the you know the upper bound that you get? The upper bound that you get is nothing but n minus two minus lower bound minus zero plus one plus one minus this entire thing as n minus two. Into n minus can write one yes divided by two okay divided by two okay now you see this can I simplify this further yes n minus one this n minus two plus one so it will become again n minus one then minus the same thing okay I'll write the same thing again n minus two n minus one divided by two okay once again I'll move the screen. Now I like the same thing again. Now here, now you see this. I need to simplify this. So can I write this as n minus one, the whole square, minus n minus two, n minus one divided by two. 
can i this even for further simplification right even for further simplification if i do this you know the formulas for this and all right a, a minus b the whole square so what is the value you get n square minus 2n plus 1 okay minus if i see you know again multiply these two what is the value i'm going to get n square minus 3n okay plus 2 of course divided by 2 okay these two things are done now now again can we go simply even more so more simplification so what do you think this will become this will become like this 2n square you know what i'm doing i'm just multiplying this so that i'll get that divided by 2 common 2n square plus 4n plus 2 okay minus n square plus 3n why 3 plus 3n minus of minus okay so keep this in mind minus of minus of 3n then of minus 2 divided by 2 okay divided by 2 and if you simplify this what you are supposed to get check this 2n square minus n square n square okay then minus 4n plus 3n minus n plus 2 minus 2 will get cancelled so this is what you get divided by 2 this is what you get this as divided by 2 can i write this entire thing as just n into n minus 1 divided by 2 okay n minus n divided by 2 which is almost you know equal to or if you want to take a bigger value to it i can easily write this as 1 by 2 n square now people are putting out from here to here if you put the value of yeah you know value any value of n it will be majorly dependent on the n square value only instead of minus n right so we almost that's why you say it's a approximate 1 by 2 n square or the other way of saying it, that is theta of n square. So this is what you see. You see this as this is your time complexity. Okay, this is the time complexity for an algorithm called finding uniqueness in an array. Okay, what is the time complexity now? You are your theta of n square. So you saw there are two algorithms that are already done. One is maximum of maximum n element, right? A maximum element in an array so where you got theta of n. Here you are getting the uniqueness of a thing, right? And you got the value as theta of n square. And all these things are 10 mark potential questions. Okay, the 10 marks question. How you remember that? How you do that? It all depends on how well you are able to, you know, sort of simplify all this. In the previous test, there was no simplification. Directly you got. In the next thing, what you will see again, you will be getting it directly only. But again, this simplification. That's why I always like this problem because there's a lot of simplification involved here. Okay. You know, you will be getting the notes, all those things. But again, that that should not be the case for not attending the classes, right? We will not be explaining again. That's for sure. Okay. But too, in these cases with so much trouble, if you are doing it, you have to be good enough to sort of listen to it and then go move forward. Don't expect again offline class, all such things, okay? To be repetition, all those things. Just listen to it. If there are people who are not listening to it, tell them to listen, okay? So let's go for the next one. We have only done two. That's not a one. We need to do the th third one, okay? So what is the third one and what needs to be done, okay? First one, let's go for the third one. The third problem, what you see right here, is with regard to matrix multiplication. We need to find out the iteration part, okay, the time complexity of your matrix multiplication. Now, what is the thing to be done with regard to matrix multiplication? Again, the time complexity, okay, fine. So, we need to look into the design aspect of it. How do you think the design aspect will come through? Now, again, I'm going to, you know, go very fast in this because this is something which I only have taught you way back in second sem. Okay, way back in second term, that too under a name called matrix multiplication lab program it was. So much time we took to do that. Anyway, it was no exams and all. Okay, so really missed that, right? So what is this P8 program? Okay, in second term. So what is the first and foremost? Okay, when you go for a design process of matrix multiplication, what are the you kept in mind here? What is that? Mute yourself. What is that? Shilpa, yes. 
don't make me to move. Okay. Now you look into this matrix multiplication, the design process. First and foremost, I'm just going to, you know, sort of run into it. What are the things that we have? Okay. First and foremost, for a matrix multiplication, you need to have a matrix A and then a matrix B. Then you will be able to find out the multiplication of it that will be stored in your matrix C. For a matrix A, the order should be M into N. For matrix B, the order sheet is basically P into Q. Okay. Now, what is the condition for a matrix multiplication to be coming through? The number of <coughs> sorry, the number of columns of your first matrix should be equal to number of rows of your second matrix. That should be equal. N should be should be equal to your Q. Then only matrix multiplication is very much possible, right? Otherwise, it's not possible. So can I say the first aspect of it, you know, when I say if n not equal to, you know, q, okay, not q, p, okay, n not equal to p, I'll say matrix multiplication, okay, not equal to q, p, right, not equal to p means matrix multiplication not possible, okay, it is not possible, so I'll write the, that as a first step, I'll write that as a first step. Then when you sort of, you know, do the multiplication of this, how do you think it will be coming through? It will be coming through like this. Okay, one second. How do you think it will be coming through? First and foremost thing is, if you are taking the value as A as the order as M into N, B as P into Q, the resultant matrix C, okay, which is nothing but the multiplication of these two. What will this have? This will be having the resultant order would be with regard to M into Q. This will be of the order M into Q. Okay. These are the basic things which you already know how things work out. Okay. How things work out for all. Okay. So to implement this again in the, you know, the previous program also we have done this. Okay. Previous, you know, semester, second sem also you have done this. So probably will be knowing if you don't know, just go back to that semester. Okay, take those programs nicely. The you know programs will be there in PDF. Okay, take down. You'll easily understand what I'm talking to. Okay, now let's look into this. If I want to sort of implement this, the multiplication part, everything and all, how I'll do is I will be taking three values basically i, j because you know i and j. Then I'll be taking the even value of k. Okay. How, where do you think this will be used? It will be used like this. Okay. I, the first one will be with regard to I'll be multiplying I into K and then the value of K into J. Okay. Now you see this, this is more of a temporary value just to you get something like when you are multiplying it, you get in this into this, this plus this plus. So to you know make sure that this plus is coming through, we use this temporary variable called k. Okay. So these are the two indices we, we which we basically use. What are the two indices? Three indices basically i, j, and k. Okay. Three indices we use, and how do you think it will be? It will be working through like this. I into k, then again you will be having k into j. For which one? This is this one will be with regard to a, this one will be with regard to b. Okay, so you know very clearly how these things work out. Okay, so can I put this entire thing into perspective now? Okay, what is the meaning of entire thing into perspective? In form of iterations, how many iterations will get? Just by looking at the program itself, you'll get to know that they'll be having three iterations. If people who don't know that, okay, please go back and uh, you know uh, sort of look into it. Or else, once again, I'll just show here itself if possible. So. What are the number of you know loops you have? You will be having three internal loops basically. Okay, three internal loops. In that loops, you will be getting to know. Okay, what are the programs that you have? Okay, so once again, I'll just show it here itself. P I. Right. Yeah. Again, this is for already those people who have already studied. Okay, so <clears throat> probably not a much of a thing. So you can go right here. So you take the values. Yeah, this is the loop. The entire rope, right? <coughs> and you can see very clearly it's written like that also. Okay. The entire logic or the main ma uh, matrix multiplication logic basically works here. So hope it's visible now. Yeah, check this. See the matrix multiplication program logic starts and the matrix multiplication program ends. The logic main logic ends. See that loop? That loop, entire loop. Okay. I'll even more zoom in through. 
Okay, so you can see this loop. This is the loop which I'm talking about. Okay, what is this loop? You have three, you know, basically indices, three iteration values here. I, J, and of course the next one being K. Okay, so you can see the three, you know, loops. What are the loops here? The first one is a for loop with regard to, you know, the rows. Then the second one with regard to, you know, the columns of B. And then you do what is known as the initial value. Then you have one more inside with regard to K where you write this value. Okay, where you find out Cij is equal to C into Ij, then A Ik into C this, this value. This multiplying everything and you are storing it in Cij. Okay, same old program P8, long, long back, probably one year back, you say the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to put this entire thing into perspective in form of what? Of, you know, algorithm. I'm not going to write full, right? I'm not, it's, uh, it's an algorithm aspect. Not going to write a program and all for that. What's an algorithm part for? The algorithm part basically works through like this. How? I'm going to write the same loop in terms of an algorithm. So let's do that, okay? First one, what is the value of i you are going to take? You are going to take the value of i will be going right from 0 to where? To n m minus 1. Why m minus 1? Because right from the first element to the last element. Last element would be m minus 1 only because you start from 0. Okay, so can I write that in a form of algorithm for i is equal to 0 to m minus 1. Then for j will be again starting with 0 to q minus 1. Why I am taking m and q? Be careful. Why I am taking m and q? Look into this c. C value, the resultant matrix of c will be in form of m and q. How? You can see this very clearly. These two should be equal. Then only you get a value C, which is of the order M into Q. So only I'm writing J is equal to, okay. What is the value that you get for it? J is equal to zero up to Q minus one. Then what you do? You put the value, the initial sum value will be, you know, sort of always we do that. So do, you know, to avoid any junk values. Then there is one more, you know, for loop, which you saw just throw in the you know, K program. K is equal to zero to N minus one. What is that n minus one? The number of elements. Okay. Then in later is the main thing. What is that main thing? Sum is equal to sum. Okay. Whatever the sum value took, then again a of i and what's the next thing? K plus b of k and of course j. Now people may be thinking, hey, he's writing something else. Let's go to the program which you study. Look into this. Okay, look into this. Look into this. Why I'm taking m minus, you know, minus one here because there I'm writing in form of an array. Okay, there if I'm writing a form of an array, and what is this CIJ is nothing but that sum I took. Okay, then the same k, then the same old thing is coming through here. Okay, so let's go there. Check this. Same thing is right visible here. Then of course I need to sort of end up all these things, right? When I write everything, I need to sort of end all, all this part of it. So how many fasts are there? How many things are there? I need to end that, okay? So what is the next thing? End far. This is with regard to K. Okay, then once I do that, I need to sort of, you know, take out what is known as whatever the value that is there in sum needs to be put in Cij. So I'll write that Cij. Whatever the value that is there in sum needs to be put in your Cij. Then again the next, you know, end for. Again one more end for. Okay, the main algorithm is only this. Okay, the main algorithm this far is with regard to this one. This far is with regard to this one. This far is ending right here. What is the base session in this? This is the algorithm. Everyone knows that. Okay, this is the algorithm. What is the basic operation here? The basic operation here is that you see that multiplication part that will be your base operation. Okay, that will be your basic operation. Now you see that I, K, J, and all that will be your basic operation. Okay, so let's do the analysis for this. <coughs> okay, let's do the analysis for this and then we'll be moving into finding out the things. Okay, first and foremost. What are the steps to be kept in mind before doing the analysis part? Okay, let's look into this. 
again the same thing the steps will not they, they mask the steps also so you have to write this entire 1 2 3 4 5 steps when you are writing for finding out the time efficiency of a non recursive algorithm based on the input size decide various parameters to be considered okay then basic operation then how many times that basic operation is done then if you you know the you know the value does not depend on the input size you need to find out worst case best case average case then the standard formulas everything we know what is the standard formula the summation of it okay so let's go there and again do this okay so let's go back to our screen so first and foremost the analysis part okay so i'm just going to write that analysis part here what are the first things that you got to keep in mind okay the analysis part what are the things that you have first one foremost thing is what is the parameter the parameter to be considered is n of course which is nothing but uh, you know the input size okay so that is what you find out with regard to it so whatever the complexity of it will depend on n now people may be thinking what is this n this in n is the the order of m into n and also the order of p into q in general is told as the input size as n okay then what is the basic operation to be performed in this case what is the basic operation to be performed it is nothing but the multiplication what multiplication the innermost loop multiplication what is that this one this is the basic operation you perform right see when you are multiplying now you will be doing that probably you will be knowing it okay so when you are multiplying this with this then you do that then again this with again one more plus you do that right so this is only the most important part every time we do so that's the most important part you can see this the multiplication then adding into sum and putting it that in sum that is the basic operation that you have here okay so let's do that now one second just take this off yeah so that's a basic operation we found out that the multiplication the innermost loop multiplication is the basic operation to be performed okay let's go for the next one what is the next one to be performed okay next part of now part of multiplication will be depending on only what the input size how much ever you need to multiply will only depend on input size nothing else na and not only not on any other factors so the total number of times this multiplication needs to be executed how many times this total number of exe you know things to be done will be giving you what is known as a formula to it now whatever the uh, things to be done here will all be implemented using the formula now okay then you do that you get the time complexity of it okay so let's do that okay let's do that i'm not going to put anything new here the same old way i'm just going to put the values right here okay so i'm just going to put it here then you know sort of i'll be zooming in okay so let's do that first if you put that all these things into perspective first most you need to understand one important thing here how many loops do we have how many loops do we have you have if i'm not wrong you got something with regard to i something with regard to j and of course something with regard to k so you have three loops here okay you got three loops here so let's do that okay let's do with regard to that know very clearly that what is the time complexity is given by n where the input size is n then how do you think you are going to look what is the outermost loop outermost loop is with regard to i which starts from i is equal to 0 and up to go till where okay till where it goes it goes up to your n minus 1 okay n minus 1 you can see very clearly all this m Minus one, q minus one, n minus one. All these things is nothing but the input size only. Keep that in mind. Okay, all these things is nothing but input size only. Okay, so only we are taking in general as n minus one, which is based on the input size here. And you can see very clearly it is m minus one is nothing but your same thing n minus one, q minus one, n minus one like that. So that's the outermost loop. Then the next most inner most loop is with regard to j is equal to 0 then again n minus 1 okay then the inner is equal to 0 again n minus okay how many times this multiplication is done in each and every iteration once okay you multiply one you put the value you multiply again plus you again put the value you multiply again you put the value like that 
so we do that every time right we basically do that every time so let's do that okay let's do that so that's what we are going to sort of look into now what are the things to be done now okay what are things to be done now you see very clearly this is where it sort of ends right so let's do this i hope the screen is visible now how many times a multiplication is done it's only done one time in every loop okay now we need to simplify this to find out what is the time complexity of your matrix multiplication okay what is the time complexity of it how do you find out very simple just have to simplify this right so let's do the simplification part is equal to summation of i is equal to 0 and n minus 1 then again summation of j is equal to 0 n minus 1 how do you calculate this how do you calculate this again same thing upper bound minus lower bound plus 1 okay so what is upper bound n minus 1 lower bound 0 plus 1 this much okay this is what you get and can i write this entire thing like this i is equal to 0 n minus 1 i is j is equal to 0 n minus 1 of n check this okay check this i'm not doing anything extra just simplifying this okay simplifying this and what is the value that you are supposed to get from this the value that you are supposed to get from this is with regard to you know what is the value that you get here okay now again see n is a constant value okay n is a constant value now you can see this all right again this as i is equal to 0 n minus 1 and what do you think this will become again <coughs> n will remain the same then again upper bound n minus 1 lower bound minus 0 plus 1 can i write this as i'll simplify right under it here itself can i write this as i is equal to 0 n minus 1 and what is the value that you get here <coughs> what is the value that you get here okay n into n which is nothing but equal to summation of i is equal to 0 n minus 1 of n square is that correct is that correct now again i need to simplify this right i need to simplify this so what i'll write here okay what do you think this will become n square into upper bound n minus 1 lower bound plus 0 plus 1 okay so what is the value that you are supposed to get here n square into this entire value will become n so this will be equal to n two. very simple very very simple you know thing with regard to you know the matrix uh, multiplication aspect so only i'll uh, generally not give this in, in terms okay i'll give always a second one because that's where you need to do the simplification first one also no simplification directly again okay now can i write this entire thing the time complexity of this now you see this this time complexity of what you call this matrix multiplication is in the terms of theta of n cube theta of n cube this is the you know what is known as the time complexity of your matrix multiplication okay this is something which you have to know okay now you see this see when you put all these things into you know perspective right when it comes to you know uh, remembering take the first one is with regard to theta of that what was the first one the first problem which you did the first problem was with regard to finding out the maximum element in an array the largest element in an array so that was a time complexity was with regard to n. the second one was with regard to theta of n square then the third one was with regard to theta of n cube. Very easy to remember for those people who only want to buy it. n, n square, n cube. Probably the reason why they have given these sort of problems is to make sure that they, you get to know what is the order of growth. Okay, The order of growth, which is nothing but depends on the input size and how they vary for each and every value. Here it's only n. Here it's n square. Here it is n cube. Now, how do you think this will be made sure? Here it was only one loop, right? It was only one loop. Here there were two loops. What were the two loops which you did? You know, yesterday you saw with regard to, you know, what is the two loops? The two loops was one with regard to I, other one with regard to J. Okay, comparing each and every time, right? So in the stress class you saw. This, so this time, in this one, you have three loops. 
right? We basically have three loops because of which the order of growth is coming up to us n cube. Okay, so what does this mean? What does this very simply mean? This means that the number of loops, as the number of loops increases, the complexity of it will also increase. Okay, the complexity also will sort of increase. Now, is that the end of it? No, this is only with regard to iteration. Okay. Iterative algorithms, non-recursive algorithm, non-recursive, iterative, both are same. Okay, so this is all with regard to iterative algorithms. Let's check for the one more things. Okay, anyway, it's all time. But again, uh, next class itself we are supposed to do. But I'll just give an introduction part of. Okay, so first one you saw with regard to iterative. Iterative is all about having a for loops generally. Okay, or also known as non-recursive. So something as non-recursive, the second one should be with regard to recursive. Okay. Now in this recursive aspect of it, what are the all things you are going to find out? First one is with regard to factorial. Okay. The second one, which is you know the one which you have already studied very very recently, is with regard to tower of Hanoi. Okay. Must be knowing this. Because you studied very very recently and you wrote the exam also for it. Okay, you must be knowing what is tower of Anand. Okay, then the next one is with regard to number of digits. Okay, probably this you would have sort of studied way back as an example in one of the programs in data structures. Okay, number of digits in a binary number. What is the meaning of that? Okay, if there is a binary number, what is the number of digits you have in that? Okay, for a decimal number. What is the binary number of digits you have in a binary number? Okay, then the next one is with regard to Fibonacci, of course. So in this, probably at least three will be able to do. <coughs> if I'm not wrong, okay, three at least will be able to do to find out what is the time complexity of all these things. Okay, same old steps only will come. Little bit difference will be there here and there. The little bit difference will be there, except that. Almost everything will be remaining the same. Okay, how you find out the I know the time complexity, everything will remain almost remain the same part. Okay, I guess you know again. Uh, hopefully, yeah, we'll at least tell you know what is the steps for it. So, what are the steps that you can go with regard to this? Okay, what are the steps that you basically think of? Again, what is the first step with regard to recursive algorithm? You need to see what is the input size. Okay, that will be number one. You are going to see what is the input size. Okay, or if there are any other various parameters, then again the second one will be with to, to find out to you know the basic operation. What is the basic operation to be performed? Then again, step three will be with regard to obtain the number of times a basic operation is executed. Okay, and different inputs of same size. If it varies, then you find out what is known as the worst case, base case, average. Okay. Then, if not, you go into what is step four, which we already know. We are going to find out. This is the step that is, you know, sort of difference. We are going to find out the recurrence relation. Okay, recurrence relation with appropriate initial condition. That one. Okay. Then the fifth step. What is the fifth step? You solve this recurrence relation. Okay. You solve the recurrence relation to find the order of growth, which is nothing but in terms of theta, all those things. Okay, you find out using your formula everything to find out. Okay, what is the you know time complexity of it? Again, the same old steps, except for the last two steps where it will be slightly varying thing. Okay, slightly it will be varying. Okay, otherwise everything remains the same. Okay, so this is something which you are sort of you know uh, going to learn <coughs> in the next class. Okay, which is basically tomorrow. Now tomorrow's, I think the second hour class, you are going to learn about the first problem, which is nothing but finding out how do you design again the factorial of a number. We are not going to go deep into it. Finding out how the design, you know, design things under works. This you know very clearly. This was again to, you know, taught to you way back in second semester itself. Finding out factorial of a number using recursion. In fact, that itself I took as an example to you know explain what is recursion. Okay, this I think sir would have taught you way back in third term with regard to how you do recursion. Again, Tower of Anai will be a major part of you studying recursion in third term. Okay, 
So tower of Hanai. Probably this one needs to be taught. You know, in detail we'll be doing it. These two things you know very clearly. Okay, so we'll directly step into what is known as the analysis part. Okay, we'll not be wasting much time into finding out what is these two do these two things or not. Okay. 